how hard can it be to make your own robotic arm with a bunch of Arduino pieces and a slightly limited knowledge of robotics? Let's try it out. Hello everyone and welcome to a new video. This is Yulia. Normally on this channel we talk a lot about data science and ML basics, applications and whatnot. But lately I've been getting really into physical AI and thinking about how we can take all the latest applications within the NLP field like agents and LLMs and move that into the exciting fields of robotics. With that being said, while I do eventually want to get to covering some of the really cool things like the Pi Zero model from physical intelligence and some of the Lerobot applications, I want to first of course as always start with the basics. So how do we start? Well luckily there's a lot of really cool systems out there for beginners and one of my favorites is the Arduino. So the Arduino is a microcontroller. There's a lot of different ones out there. I also have a Raspberry Pi that we'll play with a bit later, but the Arduino is really cool for beginners because it has a lot of out of the box functionalities that get covered. So you don't need to implement, you know, the, the minute details of robotics, like making a Pi PID controller or figuring out control systems. Instead, you can just program it within the Arduino IDE working with C++. It comes with a board and a breadboard, this is called, where you can connect a lot of the wires. It is powered by your computer, so you can just plug it into your laptop or you can bring in external batteries for even more power later. And we just have a few connections in here where you can pin these wires. There you go. Putting these together, you can combine different elements to the board, get power through them, and using the ID on your computer, you can make some programs that control them. This is a breadboard. It's basically just a way for cables to go in and out and be connected and organized without them having to float around in space. It's quite simple. It has some inner connections in. There's these lines that connect. For example, when we have this plus one, this whole column can connect to power and this minus can all connect to ground. That is a very basic concept within electrical engineering. You have power coming in and it has to connect back to the ground. All you need to know is that you need to connect this to a power source and this one has to connect to the ground so that the current can flow through it. So the most basic system for an Arduino would be to first connect a pin in here into the plus column and put this in an electricity source somewhere and the Arduino itself you know, provides that electricity that it takes from the laptop and it gives out five volts of electricity. And then secondly, you would connect a pin into the ground and that one would go into the ground node. And from here, you can start to connect different other modules like LEDs. You can plug these into the board and connect them to a particular number within the Arduino and then you can program that behavior. So you can light up a light, you can control this with code, or you can also have input modules within the Arduino itself, such as these little tiny buttons. You can press on them and this will activate various other functions. And the world is your oyster from here on. There's a lot of different parts that you can put into the Arduino, a lot of different sensors. I got the starter kit, which was enough to kind of fill this box with a lot of goodies. And I also got a sensor box that I want to play with later that has a lot of various other measurements, especially because I'm very interested in tracking live data and seeing how we can model that later. But if we want to make a robot or anything in that area, the most basic application of that is a robotic arm. So you'll basically have something with joints like your arm that it's able to get up and move around and eventually grab things and do a lot of various other applications. And to do that, we'll be using servo motors. It's this little tiny thing that has a part that rotates over here and it can be controlled. It has a power and ground wire. So we're going to connect that to the power and ground in the Arduino. And it has this white line that can be connected to a particular pin. So we know how to control it from the computer. This will be our output or what we control. On the other hand, we're going to look at our input. We can either control this programmatically or we can have, like I said, a way to translate uh, a physical direct action into the model. So we're going to use a potentiometer. That is one of these little tiny things. It's basically a dial that can rotate back and forth. It has a few connections to the board as well. So once again, we can connect to, you guessed it, the power and the ground and one pin so that we know which input number it goes to so we can program it. What this does is it rotates the current between the ground and the power as we rotate it and that through a bunch of math formulas and functions it's going to output a number which will then decide which angle the motor has to be at. So by putting this together in the board 
we have the input where we can rotate this little dial and we have the output where the um, motor is going to start moving. Looks a little like this. And this is of course just with one element, but because our board is quite a lot bigger than that and we have a lot more components to play with, we can put multiple motors together. You can control both of them with a single potentiometer or you can create a separate line and control for each of them so we have different joints moving at different angles. And that is kind of the phase where we're at right now. If I connect this back in, so basically you plug it out, you do all your wiring and whatever, and then you plug it back into your laptop, which then gives it the power. We have the Arduino code over here that is running into here. And now both of these are live. So I can start, as you can see, moving them with the little dials. It's really fun. Uh, and now we have two joints. The only thing left is to connect them with an actual structure that looks like a robot arm. And this is where we have to rely on our creativity a little bit because that does not come out of the box with the Arduino. So what I've tried is I first tried some carton and I made these little arm joints of just carton and tape just to show that, you know, you can really start with whatever scraps you have around your house. Tape. And then we're literally just putting it on top taping it over. This is very, very basic stuff, but <laughs> there we go. We have a moving arm to some extent. Now, if we connect this arm to the next uh, motor over, then we get two points of, or two degrees of movement. So now this one can rotate. Oh. The weight's a real issue here. So now this one can rotate along with the seven second motor and we can keep stacking them up. Now, obviously, as you can see from this bend, it's not the most uh, reliable system. The carton is both too weak and too heavy at the same time. So we're gonna need to tinker around with some other components. I'm considering trying a Lego solution, playing with a few different types of carton and how we connect them and how we balance the weight. And yeah, let's go from there and see what we can tinker with. But that is for the next episode. For now, I've put the code that goes with the, the little experiments I've shown today into a GitHub repository. So if you have an Arduino, you can directly copy it into your IDE and make it run from there. I have some pictures of how the wires are connected, so you can also try that out. And uh, yeah, this is a very small, very first, but very exciting step towards the world of robotics. Once we get the robot arm working somewhat well, we can play around with putting some sensors in it. For example, if you approach the robot, it could do a particular movement. We can program in some different um, angles together that will put the robot arm in a certain position, like stand straight or bend. We can program those in with the C++ and kind of just have some fun from there. When we reach the limitations of that, I'm planning of getting the Le Robot uh, 101 arms. And that's when we can also start playing around with some of the machine learning and, and really complex um, brains of the robot. But we're gonna take it step by step. We're gonna make sure we understand every part until we get there. So I'll see you in the next episode and hope you like this new series. Bye.